If you have perhaps seen me at an event before, you may be wondering why I have this ridiculous beard today. Part of it could be to blame from our next speaker here as, well, last year I went to his farm, which at sometimes is a maze, a corn maze. And last year's theme was the anniversary of the Voyager spacecraft. So when I wanted to play dress up on the food bank march, I dressed up as an astronaut. This year I went to the maze and the theme was Blackbeard the Pirate. So I immediately started growing out this ridiculous beard and will be dressing like a pirate on the food bank march tomorrow. They are an incredible farm family with incredible stories from Warner Farm in Sunderland, Dave Wisman. I think the beard looks good on him, but... It's the summer of 1978, and the whole farm is going up in flames because of a goddamn woodchuck. <laughs> I'm a 10th generation family farmer, and I grew up on these stories. My childhood was filled with all these kind of classic memories you hear about a kid growing up on a farm. I'd spend the mornings with my cousins out in the cornfields wrestling in the dirt and the dust. And then the afternoons, we'd go out to the strawberry fields and just gorge ourselves on strawberries. When we'd come in at the end of the day, our shoes and pants would be black from all the dirt, and our hands and faces and shirts would be blood red from all the strawberries we'd eaten. And my grandmother would be disappointed that we were filthy and had no room for dinner. My first venture into the business of farming came around the age of five, when I, me and my cousin Dan took a break from our normal routine and we went out into my dad's strawberry fields. We diligently worked our, our butts off for like well over an hour, picked maybe three, four quarts of strawberries. <laughs> we then set up a farm stand directly next to my dad's farm stand <laughs> and undercut his price of strawberries by a dollar a quart. He, he didn't appreciate that. But not all my memories growing up on the farm were quite that cheery. Um, April 1st, uh, 1995, I was eight, and I remember coming home from school to find a bloody pile of Kleenex and a note from my dad that said, broke nose at hospital. Now, I remember the date because it was April Fool's Day, and my dad liked to play jokes. No, Mom, it's fine. That's definitely ketchup. He didn't break his nose. I kind of repeated that several times, kind of willing it to be true, but it wasn't. Um, while working on a tractor um, with a sledgehammer, it took an errant bounce and clocked him right in the nose, um, and he broke it. Um, and that was the first time I remember kind of seeing the, the consequences of farming. And in a family with farming roots as deep as mine, Everyone has those stories, um, like the time my uncle was in a hurry to unhook a sprayer and forgot to block up the back end of this very rear-heavy implement. Um, there was so much pressure on the hitch of the tractor that my uncle was standing on the tongue of the sprayer to try and pull the pin out. Uh, when the pin finally came out, um, it was like pulling the pin on a catapult, and the whole sprayer tipped back, launching my uncle into the air. Um, and he landed just inches from the blades of a harrow that was parked right nearby or the time that um, the farm had a woodchuck problem. And my grandfather did what any good farmer would do. He went out and he bought a woodchuck bomb. For those of you who don't know, these are basically smoke bombs. The idea is that you wait till the woodchuck's in the hole, you pack up all the entrances, um, you throw the, light the smoke bomb, toss it in, pack it down. The heat uh, and the smoke and the sparks end up suffocating the woodchuck under the ground. And it works really well unless you happen to miss one of the holes um, to the den, in which case the woodchuck can get out. And if that hole happens to be at the base of a barn, the whole barn can catch on fire, which is what happened. The main potato storage barn, packing facility, shipping facility, complete with tractors, equipment, trucks, trailers, the heart of my grandfather's 250-acre potato farm burned up in one afternoon. Uh, my uncle had to take a semester off of school um, and work for free for my grandfather to help him get by, and my grandfather's business never really covered after that. Growing up, I was never told I had to come back to the farm and take over the farm. 
Um, so while I worked there during the summers in high school, when I graduated, um, I went off to Ohio to school, got my degree, and went out and got jobs across the country in South Dakota, Montana, California. But I came back, and it was in no small part because of all the stories I would hear about growing up on the farm, and I would hear twice as many happy stories. Um, it's probably once a month I'm stopped by someone who either remembers working for my grandfather or picking strawberries with my mom or who grew up on a farm of their own and they want to share their stories with the next generation of farmer. And even the really terrible stories are always told in this very lighthearted and dreamy way. Uh, my uncle laughs when he talks about his human catapult experience. My, um, my dad likes to joke that you would never get seen faster at an, in an ER than if you show up with just blood pouring out of your nose. Um, and with each retelling of the barn fire story, the, um, the, smoke, or the flames burn brighter, the smoke billows higher, and kind of the legend grows. My dad once told me that you're never going to get rich farming, but you can always be proud of what you do, which is very true, but I would add a little bit more to that. You're never going to get rich farming, you can always be proud of what you do, and you're going to have one hell of a story to tell at the end. Thank you.